iPad is in a different. Uh, who's that? Who is that behind you? Is that your daughter, Flavie? Yes. I love you. I feel for you. I think I love you. I need a hair. I really need a hair. <laughs> Weird. It is like, how am I going to get this freaking level headed? I can't figure out where the camera is. <sighs> like, your face is like pretty well framed now. Yeah, I know. Does it? Yeah, you like could be a little bit more in the middle, but uh, we actually like you on the left. That's actually good. It's good for you to be on the left for a change. <laughs> does it look? Does it look like I'm looking right at you, or no? Not really. It looks like you're looking down a little bit. I know. I'm trying to fit now. It, see, now I'm looking. Now I'm look. I'm looking directly at me right now, but it looks like I'm looking out to the. I don't even. I, I can't think. Okay. Stop. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I, 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 don't I know. feel like I, I'm like directing somebody to park. It's like maybe your your look will match how you'll be talking to us. I'm not sure. Mm, I don't know. Maybe. You're looking down on us a little bit. That, was that really necessary? <laughs> was that necessary? Really? Yeah, sorry, I'm trying to make metaphors work. <laughs> no, I'm, no, I'm, I'm taking no. jokes where I can. Listen, I'm taking jokes where I can get them. That was a good zinger, man. That was a good zinger. I, you know, yeah, absolutely. I'll, do, I'll, I'll take it. Look down on me. I'm only five foot two. <laughs> oh. Well, I didn't even. Yeah, I mean, look, we all have our, we all have our own. There. Oh, uh oh. Back coming. tonight, Maury Povich, golf commentary and podcast. <laughs> Here comes the troublemaker. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Hey, what's good? What's good? What's, what's good, ghost? I, I just heard Emily talking about Maury Povich golf podcast or golf commentary. Yeah, I was reading your message out loud. Ah. Uh, Which one? That I'm stimulated <laughs> by uh, Maury Povich golf commentary and podcast. Oh, really? That's it's an 80s thing. It's an 80s thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Ask your daughter if you're the father. Say again. I mean, that's what we're all thinking. I, I did. I asked her. I asked her several times, actually, throughout the course of her life. Like whenever she annoys me, I'll look at her and I'm like, "Are you sure I'm your father?" That's the conversation I'm having with this little girl. Every few, every so often, she just walks in and says, "Daddy, are you sure?" Are you sure? So you know what that little girl reminds me of? What? In a weird way. First of all, has everybody here seen uh, Lovecraft Country? Yes. No, I haven't seen... Well, I haven't been watching any television, but anyways, go ahead. <laughs> Have you, Sam? No. Is, is this something you all, all plan to watch? Eventually. Well, then um, I can't say probably. what that little girl reminds um, me of. Well, I mean, I get the point. I was going to say no before, but yeah, no, that's fine. It's fine. Yeah, I, I don't want to. But Flavie, if you put some thought to it, you probably could come to a conclusion of what that little girl standing over your shoulder reminds me of. Uh, probably. I'd have to remember. I'm not good Love at Love country? Well, yeah, I'd just have to remember. Point. I'd have to remember. Before, uh, before, 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 I'm going to cut Flavie off at the pass and say that before he says this, the reason that I haven't seen the show yet is not because I'm white. I just uh, haven't, um, like, I just haven't gotten around to it yet. So. so it's interesting that you said it's not because you're white. And I'll tell you why, right? So, and and I'm not going to spoil the show. But I have a funny. Look. Well, that's what I was going to go on. I just heard, like, talking from the other room and... I think there's like some like paranormal activity going on here because Misha said like yes, literally yeah. like, all I said was like no I don't really watch TV that much anymore that he could hear and, and 
he said, are you guys talking about Lovecraft Country? I'm watching it right now. Oh, that's dope. Because he can hear it, yeah. So, so Sam. Reason, he can't hear our conversation. It, okay. It's interesting that you said that you haven't watched it because you're white, right? No, no, so, no. Oh, that's not what I said. That's actually the opposite of what well, I said. Well, it's not because you're white, is what I mean. That, what I mean. That's what right. I said. What I said was that that's not the reason why I haven't watched it. Right. That, right. That, was a, that was a joke that I was making. No, no, no. I know. I know. But the, the reason why I'm, 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 I'm touching on it is because, so I was, I was in, I talked to Mike about this, and I, I just think it's just an interesting dynamic. Uh, the. <sighs> what people how people perceive the show coming from different cultures specifically being black versus being white and what mm-hmm. and first of all first of all it's a show for everybody but i remember i was a, a couple about a month and a half back i was working in a in a in in I, I sometimes moonlight in the comic store i help out the owner and you know he, he's a white guy white liberal guy and one of the other workers a friend of mine andy also white liberal guy was was in the store and we were talking about lovecraft country and there's a scene now this isn't a spoiler this won't ruin anything but there's just this very there's a scene where these black people are in an all-white diner and they they realize that they are about to be the victims of like you know <laughs> just okay. abject racism like they're gonna be they're gonna be vain they realize it while they're in the scene so like when the girl realizes it she's like nigga we gotta get out of here and they like get up and run out right and me and my wife are watching the scene and we're dying laugh. like it's 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 funny mike can attest like it's a funny scene however when i was when i was when we were talking about it in the store and I was, you know, talking about it with these two white guys who are liberal, and I'm, I'm talking about how funny it is. They both looked at me, and they're like, what do you mean, man? It was terrible. That was just such a horrible scene. And it just kind of, you know, and they were serious. Like, they didn't see the humor. Like, me and my wife saw it, and we were dying. Yeah. And, like, other black people that I talked to, like, they were, like, for us, this scene is really written from a comedic perspective. Like, it's funny. Mike, if you you can probably attest to it because you've seen the scene. Like, yeah. <laughs> The way that it's funny, but I, I and it, it's interesting because when I talk to like white people, when they see the scene, their perspective is completely different, and it's just kind of an interesting dynamic to be able to it that is. show really, you know, has good good points for you know cross cultural conversation. Uh, yeah, sorry, I just got in, but which uh, which scene are you talking about? Lovecraft. Um, Lovecraft Country. Oh, oh! I haven't, I haven't watched that yet. I've been meaning, um, I've been yeah. meaning to see that, so I'll have, I'll have to. The show yeah, that white people haven't watched yet. It's, it's, it's no, a lot of white people have watched it. It's just interesting that there are different cultural perspectives. The things yeah. that black people find, we really find humorous. White people, especially white people that are allies, find those scenes to be terrible well, because of how oh. they are. Say again. You know, it's interesting you're saying that. I'm sorry, I don't want to cut you off, but I do feel the need to just say this quickly. The way you the way you described it, it does sound really funny. However, it is funny. Um, I, right. I'm not saying that I would react like this. I don't know. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it yet, so I don't really know how I would react to it until I have. Um, I can imagine, though, and I'm, I'm just projecting. This is just all armchair psychoanalysis here. But mm-hmm. I would imagine that somebody like the people like those you're describing might feel uncomfortable admitting that it's funny because they might feel like any sort of like response to thinking that that's funny could be sort of seen as for some reason on their part condoning like racism or like i i I agree right but if you you, you know me if you know me and you're around me you interact with me I make it very comfortable for people to, you know what I mean, to have yeah. those conversations. And, you know, yeah. you like, that's something that, and especially Stephen, who owns the store, he knows me. Like, he could, he just, Stephen just, just would never, even if he did find it funny, because you're right, he would never say it. They might have that. Yeah. And you never know. Like, they, they, I don't know these people. I would imagine that it would be possible that maybe, I don't, but I don't know if this is true. I should probably just take them at their word. But it's, I'm always thinking that it's possible that maybe they did think it was funny, but might be embarrassed to admit that in mixed company. I don't know. I, I agree with you. Even, even on another level, I think the, 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 um, the power and the, and the pain of the, uh, of the scenes probably for those folks overshadows the intended humor. 
you know, especially for an ally, right? Like it's, I think when you're seeing a scene that's that powerful and reminds you of a shameful history, um, you know, that you share in, it's probably hard to dig through the layers and find the humor when for black folks, we've been dealing with it. So it's probably like the layers are more perceptible. Like you know, it's that, yes, that is. And actually that, it's so interesting. It reminds me of another, reminds me of something kind of similar or, or at least from a, a similar experience from my point of view. I remember the first time I saw Borat, um, it was midnight oh, show, and it was a midnight showing. And in the opening scenes, when they're doing like the, obviously the staged fictional scene, like the like the, like the running of the Jew, yeah. um, I was laughing so hard that my sides were hurting. Like I was, it just I could not. It was like I, I was laughing so hard that I actually was in pain. Um, and yet I later found out afterwards that like a couple of people like next to me were like really uncomfortable during that scene. Mm. Uh, so well, not even not even just that scene, but there were there were people who didn't like the movie because of those kind of scenes. There were people who didn't understand where he was coming from and yeah. thought that uh, Borat you thought that the not just the character, but you know that the entire piece was like you know anti-Semitic or something. Yeah, I know, I know. I real yes, I realized that. Like I realized that after the fact. So yeah. I think context it's context is everything with humor and that's what's maddening to me about you know SJW types who just think that context doesn't matter and just you know make you mean like cancel you, culture types yeah yeah uh, people who just mad people who preach just, exactly yeah people just make a living off of off of being offended it's like they just you know destroy any room to be human or to just laugh at things. I mean, the world is just so fucked up. And all, all we have is our humor to keep us sane. And, and, and in a lot of cases, you know, the things that we laugh at, we can separate from things that are serious. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. there's a time to laugh, right? And we can really separate something that could be controversial that we're laughing at from the actual controversial thing that isn't a laughing matter. You understand what right. I'm saying? Like there's we can. A time, yeah, there's a time to cry. Right. Right. Absolutely. To there's everything. Time. Turn. Turn. Exactly. Turn. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I think both you and Emily use the right terms in that sense. That and, and I, you know, again, I, I want to be careful because I've been on record as saying that. I, I just don't understand how people can put the term social justice and warrior together and it'd be a bad thing. But I also understand that there's this negative aspect of cancel culture, which is a bad thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it really shouldn't be, um, be, be a pejorative because yeah, it is fundamentally a good thing. I mean, it, it, you know, I, I wish I didn't, I wish I didn't necessarily have it in my head that the term, was a bad thing because the problem really is people who are disingenuous about um about 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 it or people who are just using it to either build a career or, or satisfy their own ego or feel validation or I, I profit mean, that's, off that's of someone's yeah. plight basically or maybe yeah. some or maybe some people are just are just oversensitive and don't understand uh nuance or don't yeah, understand there's that, there's, there's that too context. yeah i mean it's it's no it's well yeah chicken little well, like, that, that, that would be chicken little when it comes to cancel culture i feel like or at least when it's in terms of people who are like signifying to get offended because they feel like it makes them uh look like a better ally um i think it's great to have i think it's great to have empathy with people who and it's actually a great and important to actually have empathy with people who have different life experiences because of certain uh, divides. But I, I don't think it helps anyone when you are, when you come off as looking like you're more offended than the, than the target. Like, you, yeah, I yeah, agree. Not, if it's not happening to you, like, that, like, yeah, let them, like, I would rather err on the side of like, I would rather err on the side of like being wrong and just being and being told like oh okay no wait this is okay and this isn't ra or rather than overstepping it. Um, I can't hear him.
what's going on. And I think I think the problem is oftentimes people who are the, the people who are really the worst offenders to this degree are are not very empathetic, you know, either either to the people they're trying to educate or to the group they claim to care about. I mean, really they just, you know, like they, they claim to speak on behalf of, of an oppressed group, which is in and of itself, you know, racist and offensive because there's no group of people that has a unified set of, 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 of opinions. They just, you know, want to feel right. And then at the same time, they're just so, they, they don't actually care about, you know, trying to, trying to give people a better perspective or trying to educate them. It's more just proving I'm, personally superior so i'm going to like you know punch you because you know, or punch down on you because you supposedly culturally appropriated something or you just you know maybe used some outdated terminology so i'm going to make you feel like shit i mean i mean it's just it, it's just it's just you know gen genuine empathy is is about solidarity and it's about you know being in this kind of thing because you care about other other human beings i i mean i mean these are People who I've seen engage in this I'm, are sometimes as unempathetic and as just dehumanizing to everyone as as like you're you, as like a, as like I would imagine a, a racist to be. Yeah. So Joey, to under to, to underscore your to underscore your point because I think it's an awesome point. I, I this is a personal quote. I, I I posted it on Facebook some years back and I'm paraphrasing it, but I I once said that. You know, if if someone in the so-called majority finds, and again, I'm paraphrasing, finds themselves educating a minority on racism, that it isn't a product of empathy, but a product of privilege. Yeah, it's the unintentional. Yeah, yeah, the absolutely. Un yeah, it's patronizing. The unintentional side effect of the white savior complex. Exactly. <laughs> I, I'm, I must disagree. Uh, the white savior. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, Mike. No, I, mean, wait, I don't wait, know wait, if I would wait, link it to the white go. savior complex. Wait, I think the, the, the white things. savior has done so much to help <laughs> the entire world. And now we are persecuting him again. Did we learn nothing about when he was up on the cross and they stoned him? As soon as I heard the, as soon as I heard the accent, as soon as I heard the accent, man, I they, already they threw, I just talk me about they it. Threw pejoratives at him, and they stoned his friend, and uh, they tried to make his friend snitch on him, and and the, the white man has done many good things, uh, because Jesus in his, in his was world. white. <laughs> and not Very just Jesus, Thomas Edison. Who else? Uh, I just uh, want to say for the record, I'm a big fan of Yeshua. I don't, I don't co-sign this. Yes, Yeshua, just Yeshua, for the record. Yeshua is, is great. Uh, what is the one that's bringing us up to the moon? Uh, he makes cars. He makes Elon cars. Musk. Elon Musk, another good one. <laughs> there are many, many good white men. So I went to his church. Ex exactly. I. I Jesus pray. is church. <laughs> Elon Elon's church. I Donald Trump is the current incarnation of God. <laughs> he is the current Jesus Christ. Huh? He, he, he's the one whose middle name begins with H. <laughs> Are y'all trying to kill me here <laughs> with laughter? It's it is good medicine. Uh Certainly good medicine, but I, I say that the, the straight cis white man is the most persecuted man currently on the planet. Uh, disagree with me. Change my mind. Okay. Change, change my mind. You see? You cannot do it. You're welcome for giving the rest of the world indoor plumbing. <laughs> thank, thank God, thank God. Thank God. Uh, oh, uh, by the way, about those baskets. All, all, was all that was, yeah. Oh, we're never going to let the baskets die. Huh? <laughs> baskets? It's always going to be held against me. No, I'll no, go ahead. I'm, I'm, 
I'm mess I'm messing around in the movie. Go ahead. So you you weren't you weren't there tonight, Sam? When I told when we were talking about when we were going we were going in on Emily, she was she was really getting in her feelings. Me and Mike were playing devil's advocate about immigration. Oh, and I was saying oh. that they should take the dreamer babies and when put them this? in baskets. And it was, it was months it? back. Months, yeah, was months like in like, June. <laughs> no, yeah. I, 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 when no, Ishmael I, was in Emily's land, let the baskets go. I, I was like, we should put the dreamer babies in baskets and push them, push them back across the river. Oh my god, like <laughs> Moses across the sea. I don't exactly, know, exactly. I don't, I don't know that I was there for that. Um, if I, if I, I may, you know, it's funny. It sounds like something that I might have been there for that, but it also sounds like I, like, if I'd heard, it, I was like, I would have known that you were just messing with her. Oh, but, she was uh, getting mad. Mike was yeah, like, "You have a problem with baskets? Most their, their baskets weren't too good for Moses." <laughs> like, <laughs> If it was but during... that was pre-hurricane Emily. Yeah, was, if it, like if that it was... was me trying not to get mad. You know, she yeah. was. She was like, "It sounds like you guys are you, you guys are sounding really xenophobic." <laughs> she was like, "Yeah, no, y'all are about... sounding really xenophobic it's right not... now." A couple know... times when I hear the Hurricane Emily reference, I think. Um... I think that, wait, was there a Hurricane Emily I just missed? Uh, so sorry to interrupt, Sam, but I, I just think that's just to interject. I think that's funny when I hear I hear that meme. Mm. Um, yeah, no, it's true. We, no, we have our own meme now. Thank you, Hurricane Emily. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I just, I, it's real, that discussion, I know, I, I don't, I can't recall whether I was there or not, but I, but it sounds so familiar. And it's just, uh, I don't know. You you I, you would have known right away though, Sam. That yeah, but <laughs> like it sounds like it was a good time. Um, it was fun for me and Mike. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't very fun for me. <laughs> it was a little uncomfortable uh, for me too, but I I learned oh, to, to laugh and, and play along. Who are you, Bob Marley? Like <laughs> oh oh no, my name is uh, Richard uh, F. Blackman. <laughs> okay. Uh, AKA rich free black man. Speaking, you know, has anybody oh, seen Okay. Okay. Has anybody seen the Saved by the Bell reboot? No, not yet. Um, there was a there was a part like basically the whole premise is like there is like the next generation of Bayside is like participating in integration of public schools and and there's this like well-meaning PTA mom that's sitting there as a welcoming committee and the and her name is Joyce White Lady. Gosh. Did they bring did they bring did they bring my girl Lisa back? Lisa she Turtle? Was in, she was only in one episode. All uh, of well, them were my girls except for the main girl. At least Jesse and Lisa were my girls. Not Kelly. No, nah, not Kelly. Not Sorry, Kelly. Jesse, Jesse was tall and fine, and Lisa was thick and fine. There you I go. should probably introduce uh, myself. I am a correspondent uh, with TNA. Do you know this one? Trump News Association. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Well, since we're since you are a correspondent with TNA, I want to talk about and since Saved by the Bell came up, I want to talk about the beige washing of Colonel Sanders. Okay, let's talk. Uh -huh. about this. Oh Wait, my what, making so Mario oh Lopez Colonel Sanders? Rich, is your is your show on uh, is your show on TNA uh, being sponsored by your friend the Nigerian Prince? I have I have a few I have a few friends, but we do not talk about him. Uh, he is more like a silent partner. Uh, they beige wash okay. Colonel Sanders, y'all. This is a big deal. Yes, let's talk. Let's talk about it. It's a big yeah. deal. They, yeah. Oh my God. Now there's there's <laughs> Hollywood has done it again. <laughs> there prob there probably you know there probably were people prior to this who fantasized about like getting it on with Colonel Sanders, but now it's really really going to happen. Um, you think Mario Lopez is loose like that? He's going to let fans get it on with him? This is the role of his career. Mm. I'm trying to figure out what what I'm trying to figure out what Richard Blackman's role is here. Are you taking are you taking it literally? Like I do you am really I taking, am I taking? Well, I just did just. I'm sorry. Did it just come out that Colonel Sanders was gay or something? 
Mario Lopez is cast as Colonel Sanders in a Kentucky Fried Chicken movie, which is supposed oh, wow. to be like a which might as well be love mystery type movie. That sounds like one of my like absurd casting games that I would play on my wall. <laughs> it's gonna be a Lifetime as well. Oh, it's, it's a, a Lifetime a, movie. A, a, it is, but seriously, movie. like the Lifetime mini movie. So like, how how do we feel about this? Is this is this okay? Is it not okay? And when I mean, I'm just curious about people's opinions, though. Like seriously, with the whole, you know, <laughs> that particular cast. Oh God, I see. <laughs> I just Google it and I see the trailer right here. This looks this just just I I just laughed just from seeing like one second of the trailer. <laughs> Did you get to the part where he up facial hair? Did um, I get to the part where what? Do you get when you see his facial hair? It's really something else. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like they just got the eat. beard. They got the beard very, very. In the yeah. first frame, yeah. I saw it's fucking hilarious. It, it looks like the cover of a bad porn movie, like one of those yeah. porn movies that has a plot. Like you know, if it has a plot, it's bad porn. Maybe like right? soft, like, yeah. soft porn or something like this. <laughs> Listen, yeah, if it has a plot, it's not good porn. <laughs> like, I'm just saying, dude. No, it's true. If you actually, yeah. if you actually have to read a script, <laughs> it's not good porn, man. Well, it's like it's like how yeah, it's like in porn movies where like there's like the the meme with the pizza guy it's like you wonder if colonel sanders just shows up as like the kfc delivery guy or something <laughs> yeah do not, do not give away the plot i i still plan on seeing this, this really this, i don't think any of us <laughs> no no uh, did it premiere yet or it's going to premiere soon do you what was the date i don't remember hold on yeah, i don't remember it was on the 13th which is in two days oh sunday sunday evening do it but yeah. Sunday evening is also a Charlie Brown Christmas on PBS. I can't miss mm. that. Yeah, but that's that year. This is only happening once. <laughs> Priorities. Yeah, because once this airs, it'll never be aired again. <laughs> I, I promise you that. <laughs> like we'll yeah. never see it again. This sounds like a this sounds like a porno. <laughs> um, I mean, why did they do it though? Why did they think Mario Lopez? Were they not trying to really do a serious movie? Or a serious take on I this? I don't or? know, but obvi- well, I don't know, but obviously they cast him, so they, what do you mean? Like they've got him, and so this uh, is they think a Generation a X. They think a Generation X would watch this movie, and they would they would make some some duck itself of it. I actually so I, I feel like this is the negative example of inclusion that I'm always talking about. I, well, mean, I feel like this is uh, like they're trying too hard. I, I, I mean, Mario, Mario Lopez I, is a sexy man, so I think yeah, they're so going to do good with this one. I don't I see too the, many uh, people. I wonder if the Ben video. Affleck Batman is going to make a cameo, too. Oh, God. Right. But, what, in, the, was, in the Mario Lopez movie? Yeah, just I, just because it's it's like one of the most absurd, like, it's it's just just because it's one of the most absurd casting things I've heard since I heard, yeah. first heard Ben Affleck is playing Batman. It's like oh, you, you got to have Jet, you got to have Jet Li's Ronald McDonald do a cameo appearance too. Sure, but I, I disagree yeah. with this one, Joey. Ben Ben Affleck was good. The director was bad. Oh, okay. Ben Affleck was a good Batman. I just have to say, or at least towards Ish, um, I just at least in terms of that point about this being the downside of inclusion. Uh, I love that that's where you went with it because honestly, I don't think that that was, I don't think that that, I I could be mistaken, but I don't think it seemed like that crossed anyone's mind when they were making this. <laughs> I think mm. it was- uh, like, I knew, I knew exactly, I knew exactly where he was going with this one, but this one has a uh, dark humor. You might I be think, right, you might be right, Sam. I just like, it just seemed like stunt casting, like, Maybe they thought of it in like short terms. I don't think that they, it doesn't seem like this sort of project that where they thought of it as like a long-term, like overall, like I think- There's gonna be a part two and a part three. (laughs) It's a lifetime mini movie. I don't think that they thought, I don't think that they were thinking along the lines of changing the world with this. Yeah, well, I see, my, I the, only, the only thing that, the only the only contention I have with that, cause I, I do tend to think that you're right, but the only contention I have is it's like, well, wait a minute. I can't believe he got the role because he auditioned and they were wowed. It's Mario Lopez. That's true. That is true. You assume like people were clamoring for this role left and right. You assume like they turned down Denzel. Like Denzel. (laughs) Denzel. (laughs) No, they did. 
Jack Denzel, though. They did trip Jack Denzel. Or rather, Denzel turned down the role, really. Not even his son. Not even his son wanted the role. People people were like, no. So they were like, back up, Mario Lopez. What are you going to do? They're like, we had Glenn Close. We had Denzel. Yo, Glenn Close would have been killer Colonel Sanders. Yo, she would have been better than Mario. Oh, she would have been scary. (laughs) Glenn (laughs) would have been an amazing Colonel Sanders. She's already getting buzz for that Hillbilly movie. So like- Oh, that was a good one. That was good. I haven't seen it. I have not seen it yet. I have to watch it. I'm just gonna come up with a whole bunch of just like cool memes with just mis miscasted actors, kind of like Joey Woody, does. For his Woody, Woody, Woody Allen makes a cameo as the Hamburglar. <laughs> <laughs> what was the white man who was supposed to play <laughs> Michael Jackson? Cast a, Annette Funicello as Wendy. Joseph Fiennes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, whatever happened to that one? The white guy who was supposed to play Michael Jackson. I uh, I think that's what the, happened think- to the movie. Joseph Fiennes was going to play the Fiennes family are good actors but he was going to play Michael Jackson like all of them are good who else is uh, an actor besides uh, Joseph there's Ray and then they both have sons Joseph has a brother yep and then and then they both have sons that act yeah Ray Fiennes Joseph Fiennes and then the two both of their sons act and they're all good there was this there was this funny meme going around for a while because there was some controversy where Scarlett Johansson was supposed to play a trans character and she backed out, but there was a funny meme that showed next Scarlett Johansson playing Malcolm X. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, this is where Hollywood's going now, right? Like they're just, they're doing it, you know? I, I, I will say the one thing that I, I posted this on Facebook yesterday too that I'm kind of not happy with is they're not recasting Black Panther. Mm. Aww. They're not recasting the role. So they're just yeah. not making another movie. No, they are. It's just going to be about Wakanda. Mm. That is like uh, uh, doing an Aquaman movie, but it's about Aqua. And it's <laughs> about <laughs> <Yoda>. <laughs> That's an excellent point, actually. <laughs> We're doing a movie about water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the realm that Aquaman lives in. No, I mean, I can see if they were bold enough to just make Shuri Black Panther. I mean, I think uh-huh. it's too soon, but Shuri at least was Black Panther in comics. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. So I could see if that, that was like where they were going. And it doesn't mean that they're not going to go there at some point. But, you know, for me, it's like, I, much respect to Chasmick Bogman because I have a lot of respect for him as an actor. The yes. Black Panther character didn't die. No, can he I say something? Died. Can I say something that maybe uh, no one in their right man has uh, thought of? But doesn't this character wear a mask? Yep. I mean, couldn't you put someone else in there, a good actor, especially with the body movements and and maybe even the voice and just, you know. Well, it's arguable that when he's in the mask and he's doing combat scenes, it isn't Chadwick Boseman anyway. Well, no, Um, it's a stunt person, probably. Because we know three people play the Mandalorian. There are three actors. The guy who- Approximately 90 played Batman, so. Well, there you go. Well, I mean, and I've also, I've also read about how, um, like, like, like they, they deal, they deal with, they deal with it in movies like when an actor dies like midway through the movie or just maybe walks off or something like there was there was like 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 um like how when they were filming the crow with brandon lee and like they basically uh, they, like just very early cgi like just 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 created like a composite of his body for for a few scenes and then just put it like a, a stunt double like or for yeah. a few other shots had a stunt double, like some some amalgamation of that. But I, I mean, obviously, most of the movie was filmed. I guess it would be tougher with Black Panther because they probably even now still don't have the advanced technology enough, or, or maybe they do to just have like, you know, an actor like read all of um like 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 all of the lines. But well, I, I guess you could theoretically with like a voice synthesis or something. I mean, I'm. I'm rambling. I, I have no idea. That would probably be probably be pretty bad, honestly. I mean, maybe well, I, no I, scenes I, I, without the mask, even when he's just, you know, in a regular 
non-combat scenes. I don't know. Right, don't because know. they could CGI that. All you know, they could ultimately just CGI that. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Is it possible too that they could have like outtakes from the first one? Because I know that's what they did in like I think the most recent Star Wars with Carrie Fisher. Right, they do, and they they do have outtakes, and they also have a lot of footage from the second one already. Mm. So it's like, are you reshooting? Are you doing a totally new movie? If that's the case, why not recast? Right, right. You know, and speaking to Joey's point, like with the Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus, like when uh, Heath Ledger died halfway through the filming of that movie, they just brought in like four other people to be to play the same character, like Johnny Depp into playing Depp at was one, one point. Of yeah, you know. Not that that would probably work with T'Challa, but just recast him. I, I still want, I mean, I wasn't the big, I'm not a big fan of Black Panther 1, but I still want Black Panther in the Marvel Universe movies. So, so I mean, just to, just to say this, there are many, many, many great Black actors out yep. there. And some of them are even great African actors. Maybe reach out and get an African Actor, he doesn't even have to be from Great Britain. Like, like they always like the Nigerian prince. He could uh, get like, a great, you know, Ghanaian actor or you know, someone from over there. Yeah, that that, that would, yeah, someone who you know maybe hasn't really appeared in any 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 movies yet. Like maybe he's just a local actor or something. That would be interesting. Uh, to think what they could have could think back in the they had cast it early enough, maybe Jaiman Hunsu or something. But um, I, I, I like him. I don't see him as Black Panther, but I think he belongs in the Marvel films as 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 something. I, he, I like him. Hasn't he been there? Like, hasn't he been cast in comic book movies before? I feel like he has. I don't. I mean, one, I can't one horrible, think offhand. one horrible movie. Uh, well, not horrible. Uh, uh, the Magic, the movie about the Magic <laughs> Men. Uh, the illusionist no 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 the magic uh uh dc this shazam wasn't that he was in shazam someone? wasn't no he? oh no was it that Ch chowito ajaya for was it that one wasn't that no Shaq? he was in he was in dr strange bro uh one of my african brethren was in one of those movies Was it Jaiman Hansu and Shazam? Maybe the he guy was. Who, who gave him the power of Shazam? It wasn't. It wasn't a great role. It wasn't a great role. Oh yes, uh, Jaiman Hansu, uh huh, Shazam. See, you've forgotten him already. That's how he that wasn't. Wasn't so, that important? That's how it wasn't so good to you. I definitely think he could be in a Marvel movie, though. He's a two-time Oscar nominee. Can't they get him like <laughs> more? I don't know. Like I feel like there's more that could be done. But... I have a feeling we'll see. Uh, oh boy, in a Marvel movie first though. What's his name? The European black guy that everybody loves. Daniel Kaluuya. No, no, no. the uh, the the one that they wanted for uh, 007. Id Idris Elba. Idris, yeah. Hmm. I don't know. What's the one that oh, I we like already seen him in a Marvel movie? What am I talking about? He's already in. A, he's already a Marvel character. Yeah, he's in Thor. Yeah. Yep. Mm. What is the the one that I like from Gotham? I don't know his name. He'd be a cool Black Panther. Yeah. Denzel Washington's son would be a cool Black Panther. David oh, Chris, Washington. Chris Chalk. Chris Chalk is his name. You know, Denzel's uh, son is good, but he needs more expression in his face. Oh, because more. because Chad Bozeman had had expression. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I mean in general. I mean in general. Maybe oh. not for this role, but I mean in general. When looking at that's one thing his father does much better than him. Not to compare him to his father, but. Some of the scenes in that great movie, Tenet, uh, felt a little bit flat because he's just sitting there, not doing anything, getting paid mi millions, just 
not doing anything with his face. Not everybody acts with their face. Shit. God, if you you can't if have you, do, a, you can't have an intense scene where you are just sitting there not <laughs> acting with your face, then do something with your body. Do something. Ask Keanu, ask Keanu Reeves about that. That's not a good. <laughs> that is not a, 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 a comparison to a good one. I mean, he has a lot of intense scenes. Where he's not doing anything with his face. Well, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just not saying. Good. I do not. I do not like the uh, the one, two, and three movies everyone likes. The what? John Wick. John Wick. Oh, yeah, I, I don't. I, I don't do the John Wick. Oh well, I mean, it's, it, I mean that's another category in life where you're in the minority. That's I've been a minority my whole life. Your that's whole life. That's why I said that's another category. Thomas, uh, Thomas Edison was a minority. <laughs> it is okay. I will say I didn't like Holly Berry in John Wick. I did not like Holly Berry in any of the above. Yeah, I was about to say you can't put two bad actors in a movie. You don't like her. You don't like her in general. I was about to say I liked her in maybe two or three things. I like Holly Berry. Uh, That's just because she's pretty. She's not. I don't really think she's that pretty. Maybe you feel sorry. No, I don't think she's ugly. I I don't. I I don't find her pretty. I think she's an attractive person. I don't find her attractive. Mm, I don't know know why. I don't know why you. You maybe like her as a person, not as an actor. I mean, I just don't have any problem with Holly Berry like I do some people that like Anna Paquin like makes me want to punch her in the face. Wow, so but you she, must have really have taken issues with the X Men movies. Yeah, but yeah, Anna Paquin. But you is, know, at least Anna Paquin brings some passion to you then, because Holly Berry, <laughs> you don't even want to, you don't even want to punch her. You want to do, you want to do nothing. Right, I'm not even like aroused by Holly Berry. <laughs> wow, you really want to punch Anna Paquin in the face? Yeah, she That's has a weird. really punchable face. I, I personally, as a, as a man, don't want to punch her, but I think her face is so punchable. I almost posted it on Facebook the other day. Like, I literally almost just posted like Anna yeah, Paquin I'm has really the most punchable didn't. face. I didn't, but I wanted to. <laughs> I was, that's, some, I was that's, some, that's some stupid things. That's the, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry, but that's no. Like, call that's, him. Call, call that's it. Call it what it is. That's a mean tweet for Jimmy Kimmel. Like that's you, the SJWs. Guy. He would have been taken out by the SJWs for this one. I literally almost posted. I stopped before I pressed the button. I was. I, I almost started to say Anna Paquin has the most punchable face. Just saying. I'm really glad but I you caught stopped yourself. myself. I'm so glad you caught yourself. That's yeah. just like I mean, that, uh, that is the kind of thing that in, in a few years of this show ever ever gets big and someone goes through our archives that would yeah would you know definitely earn you know you uh, like a camp actually you and you and i both would be canceled me for some of the <laughs> comments about sjw's earlier <laughs> oh i don't I, I don't think listen i didn't people think gotta that. get out their feelings people literally and you're right about you know stuff like the anna paquin stuff and you know i'm saying it on the show now so i might as well post it on facebook but and what i mean by that is is I don't have anything personal against Anna Paquin. I hate that she played Rogue. I don't understand why Hollywood let her in the door. And I, if I'm going to be crucified for that, oh, okay. Like I, I think probably she kinda, her face is annoying to me. But you know, there are guys' faces that are that annoy me too. Understood, of course, yeah. I don't think that anyone. Yeah, of course. So, so right, it's so, just her face, uh, not her as an actress. Oh right. no, her her as an actress annoys me too. She's like, like the slightly, uh, the slightly younger one, right? She's the one with the nose. Oh, she okay. won Oscar eleven years old. For what? She yeah. played Rogue. She played Rogue in the X Men movie, mm. which forever tarnished her for me. Who would you cast as Rogue? Right now. Sure. I I actually posted it on Facebook a couple, maybe six or seven months back. I will post Daisy, cast Daisy Ridley. Okay, really? here's 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 a new one. Who would play Who would play us in the film adaptation of this? Of this show? Yeah. Uh, I I know who I know who would play me. Uh, he was in the uh, Black Samurai movie. 
Michael Jai White? No, not him. Not him. Forrest Whitaker? Yes, yes, Forrest Whitaker. That's good. <laughs> I think we should all cast each other. I think that would be a lot more fun. But yeah. Uh, um, hmm. uh, we could really play funny. each other. That'd be a good exercise. Yeah, I, yeah. I think so too. I have to think about who I would who would be playing. So let me in. just turn off my screen, and I'll be halfway to to Ishmael. Huh. Mm, too bad Dari is an animated character. <laughs> we can't, we can't <laughs> cast her to play Emily. Yeah. Um, what about Tia Garofalo? <laughs> She's a live action Daria. Yeah, I like that. I feel good, like she one. deserve better though. Um, <laughs> maybe oh, kind of old, though. No, maybe, but that's okay. Who? No, no, I was saying Janine is a little bit older now, but yeah, I, I the person I ca I would cast to play Emily doesn't even look like Emily, but I think would just kill it. Who's that? Rebel Wilson. I have to oh, look him up. Stop. No, I'm serious. I love Rebel Wilson. Love Rebel. I love her. Like, love Rebel Wilson. Like, I love Rebel Wilson. What is, what is she from? Um, she's, she's Australian. She, um... You lost I, I you think lost she, uh, she 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 did she did uh uh three of my favorite movies which which are uh uh um, Pitch Perfect one two and three Pitch Perfect one two and three she did she just was recently in Cats wow and for some reason I'm oddly attracted to Rebel Wilson I, I was mean, about I, think... to say, I feel like you are something I was she, like she just has a vibe about her. I mean, I think she could pull it off. We just have to take her to the hair salon. Dye her hair. Yeah. I'm a fan of Rebel yeah. Wilson. I'm a big fan of Rebel Wilson. A big fan. You know, she's a she's a well. Oh, she's no. She is uh, licensed to practice law. Um, I don't not here, but I think either in Australia or England or something like that. So before she came over and became like pursued a career in acting, like she got her law degree. So. Um, oh, that was pretty. Oh, that was a pretty interesting. Isn't little, it pretty uh, easy to? Uh, practice law in Australia because that's where they shipped all the criminals to. Isn't yeah. uh, getting a law degree is like getting a, a license for your hot dog stand over there? <laughs> all right. That's when we I cast when we cast Richard F. Blackman or whoever this is right now, um, it has to be an actor who has trouble holding an accent, so the accent goes in and out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm, I've been in America so long. I've, I've been losing. My that's fair. That's fair. That's that's fair. So okay. so in that case, uh, Keanu Reeves can be me. <laughs> Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Keanu Reeves, especially in a uh, Devil's Advocate. Oh my God! Whenever seriously, I whenever Keanu Reeves shows up, <laughs> like in any in, when he used to show up, like when he was younger in movies, and he would be playing like a British guy in like the nineteenth century, like you knew you were in for something, <laughs> like you just knew. <laughs> And I like him, I do. But you just knew, like going in, you're like, okay, this is going to be rough. But uh, I will say, he is in one of the greatest films of my life. Sorry. Who? Uh, who is? Keanu Reeves. One pillow only. Just stay on one. Pillow. He's he's in Bram Stoker's Dracula. Where you were, so no more pillows. What what movie is that? Bram, Bram Stoker's, Stoker's Dracula. Bram Stoker's Bram uh, Dracula. Oh yes, no, I remember. I remember. I remember Dracula very well. Watched that a lot as a kid growing up. Yeah, it was a great film. Yep. Yeah. Gary Oldman scared the bejesus out of me in that movie. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, and my girl Winona's in it. Yeah, when oh, love Winona, love Winona. She, she can't act, but I always like to look at her. Winona, um, Winona no, I think she, I think she's a decent actress. Um, I think I, she was like, you know, I mean. I just remember you saying I'm not asking if I was old enough to know who she was. She's good and in Beetlejuice. I had to be like, I'm not that young. She's very good in Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, um, Beetlejuice is good. See, for me, my I, for me, it's Catherine O'Hara. Like I think she totally steals that movie, but oh, um, yes. 
she's incredible. yeah she's, she's brilliant amazing. in it amazing she's great she in, is in, in everything. brilliant is the right word she's brilliant yeah yeah she is um Especially Winona's in good in Gets. star trek discovery oh is she in that now too i feel like what? oh my god when, when nona in star trek <laughs> discovery oh no i'm sorry she's in star trek the movies she yes she was in oh. star trek yes She spots oh, so, mom. Yep. So, oh, they really uh, are ruining the TV show with all this crying, this and crying that, and there's no, there's no crying in, in Star baseball? Trek. Oh, these, there's crying in baseball. <laughs> these people are the greatest scientific minds from all over the world, and here they are. Every time they lose one another, all over or, the galaxy. Oh yes, in the in a whole galaxy, universe, alternate universe, future, past, present, and every time they're crying, every time they lose someone, like knock it off. They didn't cry on Next Generation. I'm gonna I'm gonna log off. I'm gonna I'm gonna check out right now, but hopefully you guys will be on for a while, and I'll come back later. I just I got I got I gotta go, but I, okay, I'll, okay. I'll I'll. I'll talk to you guys soon, okay? Okay. I'll try I gotta, to gotta go, gotta go right now. Okay. Yeah. Talk to you soon. Have a good right. one. You too. But oh Ishmael, they are ruining they are ruining my show with all this crying, this and that. And uh this character Michael Burnham starts off really strong jettisons, you know, into the year three thousand something, loses everyone, finds her way, uh meets up with a good person gets in battles, becomes real sharp, and, uh, you know, really uses her wits about her. And then when she finds the people from her ship again, she goes back to weeping and crying, and it's so sentimental bullshit. And there's a character inside of her that comes out every once in a while, but they do not use her to the best of her ability, and they... I feel like we are being manipulated to say, hey, even in space, shit can be really emotional. It's not. What are you saying? Like the other the other alternate reality, Michael is inside of her? Oh, I wasn't even saying that. Every once in a while, you see the witty, smiling uh, uh, person with the esteem and the and just the confidence that you might see in a more well-rounded character. Instead of someone who was always forced to give sad, forlorn looks uh, and be happy, her friends haven't died every five minutes. It, it's just too much. It's so just, you're saying I, that this particular character is multifaceted and has several dimensions to her and that's a problem to you? No, I'm saying exactly the opposite. I am saying they are not showing her full dimensions and keep hopping on these small facets of her character. They've done it with other characters as well. Other characters who are lovers, they only show them as pining lovers. Uh, and they didn't show them as these smart people capable of adding to the ship and uh, being fighters and being strong until finally in some of the later episodes. Where I was like, oh, okay, this character is better than I thought he was. He's just not this weak, pining lover. He actually- So you're saying that this season sucks? No, in spite of that, there is still good writing, uh, good action, great special effects, but it is being held back. So it does not suck. It is only good pretty good instead of instead of amazing so it's only it was only good well that's the way you want to think about it it doesn't suck it slurps i i know i do not subscribe to that <laughs> I, I do not subscribe to that one <laughs> can we all agree that a slurp isn't as isn't as intense as a suck i would say still negative i would say still negative I would say still negative. I um, Let's put it this way. I'm thinking of what should I do if I should go back 
to the next episode because it's becoming like a love hate relationship if you should watch the next or if you should even watch the next episode it's becoming frustrating it's there are good points but I just don't this, know. This what, isn't a this isn't a, a a glowing review if you don't even know if you want to watch the next episode. If you if you watch the first two episodes, you'd be like, oh my god, they have done great things in this show. They have taken it to a whole new level. But then, by the time you get to the fourth episode, third fourth episode, you don't know. You know what is interesting about this is it's it's one of these new uh, it's a new tendency to have a different director every episode, but even then it still tends in the same direction. So I'm thinking to myself. So it's kind of like uh, like like the Mandalorian. Correct, correct. But even though it's different directors, they still keep it's still written a certain way. So you can't. You can't change the direction too much when the writing makes it sappy and makes it crying and the this and the that. I mean, it's almost so bad. I said the actors should have a mutiny and they should write their own. You think they should go on strike or write their own characters? They should write out any of the crying. Or they should Speaking do... of which, there is a new episode of The Mandalorian out. Oh, okay. So I did figure out it does come out on Fridays. They said 3 a.m., but... You probably have some kind of situation where you can get it a little earlier than 3 a.m. If it comes out on Friday at 3 a.m., that means it came out at 3 a.m. this morning. Oh, you are. Oh, look at you. Okay. That means it came out at midnight in L.A. Uh, I see. That makes sense. It's a midnight L.A. Okay. Now it all makes sense. When, when you put your minds together like this, y'all got some powers. I can't guarantee my mind works that well, but I'll try. Well, you only need 50% of your mind and 50% of Ish and Ishmali. This particular episode is only 38 minutes. Mm, that is sad. That is a sad one. Exactly 38 minutes? Yep. Is it like, you know, 38 minutes in one second, 37 minutes and 59 seconds? What it just has runtime thirty eight minutes. So who knows if they round it up or down? Right. It's a, it's a pretty good season. I, I like I like this one. Though I, I feel like uh, Dwayne was was trying to hint at saying his name was not. What we thought it was, Gar, 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 no, something like that. Grogu. Grogu. But that's still his name so far. Maybe, maybe Dwayne had skipped over that information. Didn't know his name was Grogu. Here. Did you say hello to my daughter? Did Did Emily leave us? Uh, no, she's still here. She's just Emily? kind of quiet. She's lost her voice. Emily. Yes. <laughs> Emily. Can you hear me now? Are you sure she didn't leave us, Flav? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm sure. Maybe I, I'll pick up my phone because I, I don't see if I see her right here. I'm right here. I've just been quiet. Wherever, where did I put my phone at? No, but I really think Rebel Wilson could 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 pull off Emily. Emily's complicated. She was on a a six hundred calorie diet. Emily, what? <laughs> I've been here this whole time. I don't know. I see her on the phone, and I see her as one of the people in the group. But yeah, he's doing one of his not funny routines. Yeah, Can... it's funny. <laughs> Mike, you hear her? Uh, yes, but she is kind of like a ghost. I think maybe only I can see her. She no, I see of... her on a thing. Oh, you just can't hear her? I I, I, I can't hear her. Mm. 
she's kind of like uh 